Welcome back. Last time we were looking at this Teltonica IET955 router. We've got a shell on it which is design functionality, we're going in through the wired network ports on it and we were investigating specifically where it's getting this Wi-Fi SSID and password from. Now we saw the SSID um, is coming from the MAC address of the Wi-Fi interface, the password looks random and we found a tool called MNF underscore info, manufacturer info, that was getting that information. So let's just jump back through to the shell we have on this. So the tool's MNF info. When we ran that, it gave us a list of secondary parameters we could provide. So if you run MN info SN, you get the serial number. When you run name, it gives you the name of the product. Now, it wasn't giving us the Wi-Fi password, but we found by running strings on an MNF info, we got there down the bottom, you can see those parameters it's asking for. You've also got Wi-Fi pass there. So it's kind of like a, a hidden parameter. So if we do Wi-Fi pass, we get the Wi-Fi password come out of it. But where is it pulling that information from? Now, one of the problems is the shell we've got here is quite limited. We don't have S-Trace. Now, S-Trace is great. It shows us what a binary is doing. So it lets us see which files it's opening, what it's accessing. But we don't have it on this device, so we can't use it. So we've kind of got a few options here. We can try and get tools onto the device. And if we get tools onto the device, then we could run S-Trace and see what it's doing. That's one option. Another option is we could perform static analysis. We could look at this binary, the libraries it interacts with, and try and work out what it's doing. The third thing we can do is actually pull the binaries off this router, which is a MIPS processor, put it onto our laptop, and then use an emulator to try and run those. So I'm gonna go for that option, the emulator option. Now, again, this is off the cuff. This fully has the potential to go wrong. In fact, it's almost certainly gonna go wrong. Um, so I'm gonna make a directory called file system just to keep everything nice and neat. Now, the first thing we need to do is get that binary itself off the device. So what I'm gonna do is just grab everything using SCP, because it's got SSH, so we don't have to do any of that messing about with USB sticks or anything like that and I'm just going to get the whole sbin directory and pop it in here. So give it the password. Be interested to see if anybody could work out that password solely from the noises of the keyboard whilst I'm typing. I'm getting everything there. Um, just because there might be other interesting tools we want to run. So now um, if we go into sbin, I've got a load of files. Interestingly, there's a lot of .shs shell scripts. Again, they're really easy to reverse engineer. Unfortunately, our tool, I don't think, well, no, I know it's a binary, so file MNF info. So there we go. <clears throat> it's an ELF. You'd expect that for Linux. MIPS, MIPS32, dynamically linked. Uh, MicroLibc for its uh, library there. Corrupted section header size. I don't think that's important. That's not too important. So it's MIPS as we were expecting, so that's good. Right. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use uh, an emulator to run this. Now rather than try and run the whole system, I'm going to just try and run the binary itself. It's generally easier. The only thing is I think this might be interacting with the hardware at quite a low level. So I'm using QEMU, MIPS static. Um, MIPS static means it's for the MIPS system. Static means it's just for running one binary. And then I'm going to give it um, sbin mnf info. Okay, so as expected, it's a dynamically linked binary. It's relying on external libraries. And what Kimi's done is it's trying to load those libraries. Um, it's going to the root of my file system, and it's not going to find microlibc for, um, for a MIPS system on my Ubuntu Intel virtual machine. So what we need to do is do a ch root to kind of rebase the file system so we kind of trick it into thinking it's in a different place and give it those libraries. Right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is uh, do SCP again. This time what we're going to do is we're going to grab the whole of the lib directory. I'm not just going to grab that single library. The only reason is that I, I just know that it's going to it's going to be other libraries as well in there. You end up chasing your tail a bit with this. Oops, forgot the recursive. Sorry about that. Right, 
Right, so we're grabbing a load of different libraries. You know, 99% of these we're not going to use. It's just going to be a few of them, but, but let's just get all of them for now. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to use chroots instead. So that rebases the file system to here. So now that lib directory I've got here with all those libraries is going to be presented as the operating system to Kimu. So it's from Kimu MIPS static. It breaks the completion. And then we want sbin mnf info. So now that should run that. Oh, no, okay. Elementary mistake there. Now, because we've rebased the file system, we obviously need that that Kimu binary where we are. So um, let's grab that. So we're just going to copy that to here. So now that we've got that in this directory, there we go. Nope. Uh, nope, that's because I'm being stupid again. That's what happens when you record these things live. Okay, so now it's run that binary, and now we've got another library. Can't, f cannot, can't load library libmnfinfo.so. Okay, so that's not in the lib. I bet you it's in user lib. Um, right, so let's just wing it. Because I've already made loads of mistakes, so I don't really see any harm in making a few more. So user lib will just copy all of those across. Really doesn't matter where they end up, they're going to end up in the same lib as before from the SCP command I've run, really doesn't matter. It's just going to look in the default places for those li libraries. There's a lot here actually. So I think all of this stuff, it's to support all the extra functionality they put in this. I can see VPN, loads of things flying past there. Oh, a load of HTM. Interesting. Control files, wow, that was really quite a lot of stuff. Anyway. We've grabbed that, all of that, so let's try running it now. Right, bang, we've got it running. It's running in at least its most basic form. So we've now got that MIPS binary on our Intel virtual machine and we're running it. So we've put all those libraries into a ch root, rebased it so we can access them. Now let's see what happens when we run uh, any of these. SM, NA, uh, WPS, NA, name. I'm getting a theme here, NA. Okay, so it's not it's not giving us a result. It's not an error though, which is it's promising. There's no seg fault or anything like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give Kimu a dash S trace, which essentially runs S trace within Kimu. You can actually run it outside of it and it gives you similar results, but this gives you a slightly cleaner output. Now loads and loads of stuff's going to scroll past when I do this. Right, so we can see here the last thing it's trying to do is open proc mtd and it's getting an error. Now proc mtd, mtd is memory technology device, it's the flash. Now we could try, there might be some utility to allow us to create or emulate that within the here. But okay, I'm, let, let's go lazy, let's go really lazy. Um, let's make a proc directory in here and let's uh, let's just create a MTD file. So we're just using touch just to create the file. Hopefully that will trick it and let it get a bit further. Yes, yes it does. Exec VE. So it's, it's running a shell command, bin sh as you'd expect. DD, if equals, so that's the input to DD, which is a block copy. Dev MTD block, block size one, skip 16, count 12. Redirect errors to dev null. Right, uh, let's just try try this. So let's make a dev directory and then uh, touch dev mtd block. See what happens with that. No, that's not going to work. Sorry, that was stupid of me. We don't have bin sh. Now, I know from experience that trying to get the shell running in a meaningful way in Kimi static is just not going to be a goer. Now, we could try and emulate the whole system, but again, that's a pain. So, let's try this. This is just running this command. The thing is, there's not a 
dev MTD block, I don't think. No. Let's just test that, just in case I'm missing something. Yeah, so no dev MTD block. Right, so all this is doing is taking some data from MTD block and block size of one byte, skipping 16 bytes and then reading 12 bytes of that. Um, let's just try going through. Okay, no, that doesn't make sense. So MTD block zero is probably the bootloader one. Okay, MTD block one has given us the name. There you go, that's the name. So that was the command we ran, I think. Yeah, name. Right, so let's run a Wi-Fi pass. There we go. Skip 144 count 16. So if we take this, this command, so skip 144 count 16, let's just change it. Skip 144 count 16. And look, there, we've got the Wi-Fi password. So it's copying out of MTD block zero. So if we run strings on slash dev MTD block zero, or block one, sorry. Yeah, there you go. You've got the name, the WPS password, the serial number, manufactured date, maybe. And then you've got the Wi-Fi password there. Now, the rest of those strings, I don't know what they are. They look like it's binary or there's possibly corrupt stuff. Um, we can run hex dump, I think that's on here. Dash capital C is human readable. Um, slash dev MTD block block one. Pipe that through less. Yeah, there you go. So every 16 bytes there, there's a chunk of data. We've got a gap and then it pulls out that Wi-Fi password. So that's interesting, actually. Just going back a second to just think about that. Um, that command is not in our binary. Now, if we, um, if we look at that, it's only 5K in size. And it doesn't have that string in it. So I imagine it's loading, yeah, okay, libmnf-info there. So it's loading a library when it first starts. If we look at libmnf-info.so, um, which will be in lib, strings libmnf-info, yep. Put it through less because it's probably going to be a bit more. Uh, so there we go. We've got, oh, whoops. Sorry, let's jump back there. We've got function names there, get maketh name WPS, because this is a library, the function names are there, which is helpful. Get Wi-Fi pass. So there's nothing hidden there, but there you go. So yeah, you can see how it's building up. DD interface equals dev MTD block, and then it's doing a it's doing a string substitution from somewhere. And then it's taking those values. So there's gonna be offsets and things like that. And there's an there's an echo, echo dash NE. DDOF, so it's the output, so that's how it's saving things, and hex dump, and all that stuff. Right, that's quite interesting. Where's it getting the number of the MTD block from? Which one's it, which one's it interacting with? Can we change that? Can, can we somehow inject these counts and things to get command injection to us? I'm, I'm just going off anyway. But we've now found how MNF info works. It's pulling data from one of the, the flash partitions, which won't be reset when we factory reset the device but we still haven't worked out how it's actually copying that at factory reset what actually happens at factory reset to get that wi-fi password to put it into the uci config which is then copied through to host apd well that actually went better than i was expecting so we, d we have worked out a little bit more about how all of this works um sorry for all the typos and the commands there that's what's going to happen when i do these things in one take but if you like watching this, if you like watching me mince about, barely able to do the things that I do here, then please press the like button um, and subscribe and I'll be back for more in a few days. Thank you. Bye.